So today I would like to present a very important lecture on the tree of life. When we think the tree of life, we often think Kabbalah. Well, nothing more wrong, because the Kabbalah was a Judaistic rewrapping of the Arabic and previously Akkadian tree of life. Due to Judeo-Arabic trafficking in Spain in the Middle Ages, in the 10th or 11th century, Kabbalah was re well, it was created based on the Arabic knowledge of the Tree of Life, going back to the times of Akkadians or the Akkadian people of Mesopotamia. So here, I would like to retrace it by an article written by Simo Parpola in the Journal of Near Eastern Studies, which is extremely important. Tracing the origins of Jewish monotheism. Jewish monotheism was a product of 6th century before modern era and Greek philosophy. Now, I would like to simply go through certain symbolism that is found both in Egypt on the reliefs as the Lady Seshat and Toph is endowing the king and queen with exactly this sun disk entwined with serpents, flanked with serpents, that is actually creating a demigod, a god or elevating his soul to the stars, to the fields of Ya'aru. Now, the tree of life is usually flanked by the priests of Oanes or that of uh, Ea, because Ea, the god of the abyss and wisdom, is initiating the kings and queens into the mysteries of the stars by transforming their consciousness by giving a birth to a star, to a spirit and assigning them to the order of the stars. Now we have various typographies of such trees of life and I won't read this article to you, however I highly recommend it as we can find uh, similar mittens and similar typologies in uh, both the uh, throne rooms, for example, of Ashurbanipal II, that's in the British Museum. If you're interested, you can visit the Berlin Pergamon Museum and find several such typologies as well, typographies. So here we have the king impersonating the tree because the living human being, the king, the queen, were undergoing an alchemy of the gods. And for each planet or nature in the solar system, each, let's say, archon conquered within, winning the crowns of it, it brings to mind the seven-headed beast or the seven-headed mistress. The heads are the crowns of the planets. So we may say that the king, the queen, the pharaoh or his wife, were the prime exemplaries of those who have conquered the natures of those planets and thus were elevated by the gods by building a new god body for them which their spirits will inhabit after they pass away. Now furthermore, this is an attempt by Mr. Simo to compare the Kabbalah to the original tree of life. So we have been as understanding Saturn and so on, so on. Uh, let's go further down here. And we find such typologies in various systems. Uh, for example, in the tree of meditation, in the Hindi Yogas. We can find it in the Sephirotic tree as mentioned before. We may find it in Yggdrasil, which is not mentioned here, of the Scandinavian people, or the Irminsul of the Germans. It's exactly the same thing. So, Mr. Simo attempted to recreate it with Anu as the grounds in understanding the moon and so on so on. Well, Anu in this regard, in the ancient Mesopotamia, was Saturn. And furthermore, the stars that are in millions of millions of Ashuraku or the distances further into the cosmic cave. 
Now, the progress is or should be astronomical. That is why most alchemical travails are started from Mercury under protection of the star, Sun, Ra, Shamash, then to Venus, then to the Moon, and so on and so on, then to the Triregnum of Earth, then to Mars, then to Jupiter, then to Saturn. And hence, the work is supposed to be completed in such a manner that the person with royal qualities, with imperial qualities, with all the qualities of those planets, even if once for a lifetime, even if once in great freedom he experienced them, and that was recognized by the gods, even if for a second, then the tree of life is to be built within his body and later transcri transcribed and interpreted into a god. No matter what those Jewish Christians try to say, ignore those liars, because they're only good at slandering and deceiving and diabolizing every sacred tradition that they manage to destroy with their pathetic hatred and uh, revanchism upon the world. And as I speak that, they're trying to stop me for the very purpose of this not leaking out that True humans are capable of becoming gods and goddesses in the procession of great gods and goddesses. Now, this is a tree of life plotted upon the body of the king, the divine Anthropos. The Anthropos or the king or queen that were in such a way modified. The souls were modified, the spirit that was born from it is an extract, a great elixir of the lives, of their sorrows, of their hatreds, of the true movements as a human being. Ex homo. And it was not that crucified pathetic worm, but there were many others who joined the gods. Now he seemed out pigs. I'll cut up their souls, because God equipped me to cut the souls of those pigs. And for sports, I'm slaughtering Jewish Christian angels as I please. Now, I would like to move to certain typologies and uh, typographies of the Tree of Life and the Holy Sun Discs of the Gods. So, we have many glyptic variants of the Assyrian Tree of Life, as you can see for yourself. In many civilizations, in many cultures, even Mohenjo-Daro, even the Indi Valley civilization, in the paintings of the uh, tribes of Native Americans, in the Hindi glyphs, in the Japanese glyphs, in the Zoroastrian glyphs, so here we have kings that were elevated to the position of spirits that were connected to the great stars. These were men elevated by the gods. These were females elevated by the gods. And further on, now, this is the example of how re-Judaizing the original knowledge happened. This was taken as an emanation or generation of Ashur, because emanationism is also a Judeo-Christian invention. So we have Anu as the top, Ia as the abyss, Sin as the moon god, and then all the gods that are generating and that are calling and beaconing the mortals to their thrones that are blinded by the swarm and swamp of earthly lies because someone was jealous that humans may become gods upon gods with the gods. Someone very pathetically revanchous was jealous of it and had to destroy everything in order to triumph upon earth and destroying every noble soul, every noble creature on earth. So, with this bespoken, rest assured that I'm not afraid to die. Because when I was born as the Red Spirit, 
Before I was slaughtered, I was carried to Tartarus, to Hades, to the domain of Ea, and I was assigned to the sphere of Saturn as a new god amongst the gods. And whatever those pigs do to my mortal body means nothing to me, because when I pass away, I'm interpreted into the god body that was built throughout the years of my strife, throughout all my hard work, toil, bleeding, sweat into this work on behalf of the gods. Rest assured that I will retaliate on the pigs and liars. Rest assured that you can do nothing about me and you can trash my nervous system, you can destroy my mind and body, but I will reclaim everything. And then you, whoever wronged me on earth, trying to keep those lies together of theirs, will be exterminated in the pool of fires, will be exterminated in the great ocean of fires. And guess what? Christians to the lions and Akkadian kings were lion-headed and serpent-tongued because they were born to command and they were born to wage war against those liars. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.